Nickelodeon Universe at Bloomington, Minnesota's famous Mall of America is one of the best indoor theme parks in the world. This park is beautiful. It feels like an outdoor park and it's extremely lively with the surrounding atmosphere of the mall, the unique ride collection, and the lovable Nickelodeon characters scattered throughout the park. But before the park was adorned in green slime and Nicktoons, the park was home to Snoopy and the Peanuts gang. The park originally opened in 1992 with the Mall of America as Knott's Camp Snoopy as a way to pay homage to Charles M. Schultz, the creator of the Peanuts comics, who grew up in Minneapolis. The park was an immediate hit. The lush greenery made Camp Snoopy feel like you were out in the wilderness while providing refuge from the harsh Minnesota winters. The park would retain this theme until 2006 when the park lost the Peanuts license. Cedar Fair owned the amusement park rights to the Peanuts license and the mall was severely limited with how they could market the park. For reference, Cedar Fair owned Valley Fair, which was just 20 minutes away. Because of this, the park lost the Peanuts branding and was renamed the Park at MOA, and all the Peanuts theming was sloppily removed. However, the natural beauty of the park thankfully remained. And in 2008, the park was rebranded as Nickelodeon Universe to become the world's first Nickelodeon-themed amusement park. While locals were nostalgic for Snoopy, Nickelodeon was a fresher intellectual property that re resonated more with the today's children. Since Nickelodeon Universe is part of the highly popular Mall of America, the park and mall is extremely accessible by either car or public transit. The mall is just a 10 minute train ride away from the airport, which makes it the perfect stop during a layover. And in case you have baggage, Nickelodeon Universe does have giant lockers underneath the ferris wheel for a reasonable price. Nickelodeon Universe is the focal point of the Mall of America. Nickelodeon Universe is located smack dab in the middle of the four-story mall. And Nickelodeon Universe feeds off that energy of the mall. It's a complete sensory overload to have the tangled track of the coasters in the center juxtaposed with the hustle and bustle of the shoppers on the outside rim. And you're able to get some really cool aerial views of Nickelodeon Universe from the upper levels of the mall. The park is just 7 acres in size, so rides are built in close proximity to each other, and in some cases, right on top of each other. It's really a marvel to see. Because of the central location, Nickelodeon Universe has several entrances and exits. And to capitalize on this location, Nickelodeon Universe is one of those rare parks with free admission. You're able to soak in the atmosphere or cut through the park on your way to your next store, or you can pay per ride to experience some of the park's best attractions or you can purchase a pay one price wristband if you want a full day of thrills. That's the option I always go with. I mentioned this earlier, but Nickelodeon Universe really looks incredible. Despite being in the middle of a mega mall, you feel like you're in a woodsy outdoor amusement park. That's thanks to the giant skylight letting in ample amounts of sun and the giant trees spread throughout the park. This park has more trees than some outdoor parks, as sad as that is to say. When the Nickelodeon IP was added, I was fearful it would ruin this great atmosphere, but it only complements it. The park is bright and colorful with its colored walkways and sleekly painted rides. And there are plenty of photo opportunities with the delightfully cartoonish ride logos and the walk around characters. The compact nature of the park can cause it to feel quite hectic on a busier day. The walkways can get really jammed up, particularly on weekends. And not surprisingly, this can lead to some lengthy queue lines. In my first visit, the coasters had roughly half hour waits, and the log chute sported an hour wait all day. For that reason, I strongly recommend starting with the log chute, which is easily the park's star attraction, but more on that later. The lines are not only caused by the crowds themselves, but they're also due to the operations themselves. The park's star attractions do not have the best capacities. Most of the coasters either have one train or tiny ride vehicles. The one exception is the Pepsi Orange Street with its comically long train and two train operations. So not only do several of the rides have inherently low capacities, but they can load rather slowly as well. Nickelodeon Universe has this weird thing they do with the wristbands. Unlike most parks where you apply the wristband at the ticket booth, at Nickelodeon Universe you buy the wristband at a self-service kiosk and then the ride operator at the first attraction you visit fastens it to your wrist with a sticker. This may seem like a small thing, but it took an extra 15 to 20 seconds per person and that time piles up when it happens over and over again all day. 
If you visit on a weekday, you will also have to grapple with a rotating ride schedule sometimes. Due to less demand and staffing, the park will rotate ride operators between some of the smaller attractions. While this can be a bit annoying, it's much better than dealing with long lines in my opinion on the weekends. And this doesn't really bother me either because the signature rides remain open for the duration of the day. One of the biggest strengths of this park is 365 day year round operations. That's the perk of being inside a mall. But because of this, you're likely going to find at least one ride down for maintenance each visit. Thankfully, the park posts its refurbishment schedule well in advance online so you can verify if the rides you care about are open prior to visiting. Speaking of the rides, Nickelodeon Universe has a really interesting ride lineup. Starting with the coasters, Nickelodeon Universe has five of them. You don't really visit this park exclusively for the coasters, but they suit the park perfectly. The most notable coaster is the Pepsi Orange Streak, the sprawling Zaire Tivoli coaster that travels all throughout the park. This is one of the tamer coasters out there. In many ways, it feels like a monorail. It's not overly fast nor forceful, but it provides amazing aerial views of the park and those visuals 100% make the ride. Fairly Odd Coaster does a better job balancing visuals with thrills. The Fairly Odd Coaster is a Gerslauer spinning coaster that weaves around poles, trees, and pathways while providing some mild thrills thanks to the solid spinning and sudden dips. And fun fact, this was the first Gerslauer spinning coaster that was later cloned. And it's really cool to see why the pandemonium layout we see at all the Six Flags parks travels the way it does. If you want thrills, your best bet is the Spongebob Squarepants Rock Bottom Plunge. This Gerslauer Eurofighter has an awesome beyond vertical drop that gives some good airtime plus a few solid inversions. However, the coaster is a bit shaky and can cause some headbanging with over the shoulder restraints, so you may need to ride this coaster defensively to enjoy it. If you want more in-depth thoughts on these three coasters, I have separate reviews posted for each of them. The other thrill coaster is Avatar Airbender. This Intamin Halfpipe coaster is really disorienting with the spinning and close proximity to the ceiling. I find these coasters a bit repetitive and more like flat rides, but it does offer several good spots of weightlessness. Last but not least, there is also a powered kitty coaster called Back at the Barnyard Hayride which is one of the smallest kitty coasters around. But it does have a wicked head chopper with a tree branch that actually scraped the top of my head on my ride. It just goes to show that adults were not this coaster's target audience. In terms of flat rides, Nickelodeon Universe has an interesting collection. The highlight is TMNT Shellshock, the Gerslauer Sky Roller, that is a rare find in the United States. If you're unfamiliar with this type of ride, each guest is seated between two wings. By strategically moving the wings in rhythm while simultaneously shifting your weight around, it's possible to start flipping out of control and get upwards of 30 to 40 flips in this ride. It does have a bit of a learning curve to it. Most guests will come off frustrated that they're unable to invert even once because they're rushing the flips. But it really has some technique involved, but once you get it, it's extremely rewarding because you can get downright insane rides with the amount of barrel rolls they do in such a short time. Brain Surge makes it a bit easier to invert. This is one of those chance unicoasters where you control the flipping with a lever. So you can either flip uncontrollably, hang upside down, or remain stationary, whatever you choose. The park also has two of my favorite flat models in a frisbee and a drop tower, but neither are standout versions. Shredder's Mutant Masher is the frisbee ride, and this one runs a really short cycle. You only get two max swings. Those max swings do give decent pops of airtime, but the rest of the ride is rather tame, especially since there's no force in the downswings. Splatosphere is a drop tower, and it feels like a supersized version of those kitty drop towers you see everywhere. This one runs a really long program with multiple drops, but the drops definitely feel toned down combined with the ride's modest height. This one does give a nice aerial view of the park though. One weird thing with this park's ride lineup is that it doesn't have many spinning rides. Really the only adult spinning ride is the Backyard Against Swing Along Wave Swinger, which looks like your average swing ride at first, but it does feature rare backwards seating. And since this is a Nickelodeon park, there are also several kiddie rides. Rather than having one single kids area like some parks, Nickelodeon Universe scatters the kiddie rides throughout the park in between the adult rides. It's nice how the older kids can go on something while the younger kids have an attraction nearby as well. 
But the star attraction at Nickelodeon Universe for myself and most park guests is the incredible log shoot. This is the lone attraction in the park that does not have a Nickelodeon theme. And that was a very wise decision. I think the park realized just how special this attraction was and decided to leave it untouched when the park was converted to Nickelodeon Universe. The log shoot is the complete package. It has a wonderful audio track, a wooded cave, and solid animatronics. And there are points where the immersion is broken since you're reminded you're a mall, and I sort of like those segments. It's really remarkable this attraction even exists in a mall, no less, so I sort of like the hilarity that you're passing by a 30 foot tall Paul Bunyan animatronic at one point, only to pass by the food court or Hooters later in the ride. Oh, and this ride also has two great sizable drops, and it's not a soaker, which is a good thing since it's inside a mall. In short, Log Shoe is a masterpiece. And it's the reason I want to return to Nickelodeon Universe. I think it's better than almost every roller coaster I've ridden, and I have a separate review for this ride if you want more in-depth thoughts why this ride is so awesome. The other notable attraction that's included on the wristband is the Ghost Blaster Shooting Dark Ride, which is located underneath the ropes course. This attraction is the standard 2D cardboard cutouts you'll find on a lot of the other Sally Dark Rides, but the guns work flawlessly as do the effects. Plus, this ride is longer than it looks. I'm just confused why this ride never got a Danny Phantom theme. It seems like an obvious fit. There are also two other attractions not in the wristband that I want to bring up. First is the Dutchman's Deck Adventure Course, a giant complex with a 56 foot tall ropes course, the longest indoor zip line in America that whizzes over the park, and a giant spiral slide. I have only done the latter, and it was an interesting experience. It cost just $3, and the view from atop the tower made it worth it alone. The descent itself was just okay. The tightly twisted slide never really builds up much speed, but it is a really long slide. The other attraction worth noting is Flyover America, the Flying Theater. I'm not quite sure if this is officially part of the park or not, but it is located within the park's borders. This Flying Theater gives a nice aerial tour of famous U.S. landmarks, but it's rather pricey at $20 per ride, so I only recommend it if you absolutely love flying theaters or have never experienced one before. Last but not least, let's talk about food. Unlike most parks that are filled with overpriced food stands, Nickelodeon Universe has barely any food options, directly in the park that is. Since the Triple Five Corporation owns both the mall and this park, the owners decide to capitalize on the food options available in the mall itself. And this is a brilliant move because it allows the park to use what little land they have available entirely for rides. So is Nickelodeon Universe worth visiting? Without a doubt, yes. This is one of the best indoor amusement parks out there. The lively atmosphere of the mall combined with the unique woodsy setting makes it a really special park just to walk around. Plus you have an elite attraction in the log shoot, plus several other solid rides. I honestly prefer Nickelodeon Universe to the nearby Valley Fair because of that incredible atmosphere and eclectic ride lineup. And I prefer the original Nickelodeon Universe to the newer one that just opened at the American Dream Mall in New Jersey. The American Dream location just doesn't have the same atmosphere, but it does have a superior coaster lineup if that's more your priorities. So those are my thoughts on the original Nickelodeon Universe theme park at the Mall of America. What are your thoughts on this park? Have you been there? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.